In this video you will learn what is server-side rendering inside React, how you can implement it and what are the benefits of it. When we are rendering a page we can do it in different ways. The oldest and the fastest way is simply to render an HTML page which will be rendered by the server. As you can see here I have my own website which is fully rendered by a server and here I can open the source code of this file and as you can see here this is the DOM which is already built and prepared by backend. This is the fastest approach. Another approach is inside frontend frameworks. For example, if we are talking about React Angular or Vue, our backend does not do anything, it simply delivers the empty page with our JavaScript, and then our JavaScript on the client builds the page. And here you have a typical example with React application, where everything is rendered by client JavaScript. And when I will open the source code here, as you can see, we have just a plain index.html page and we don't have anything inside our body except of the container. And here in the bottom we have our JavaScript, which is building our page. And the main benefit of client build application is that you can, without page reload, jump from one page to another. This is why nowadays we are building lots of websites just with JavaScript on the client. But with this approach we have problems, we don't have any DOM before our client JavaScript will render something, which essentially means our page is empty. And it has several problems. First of all, our initial page is fully empty, because backend didn't render anything for us. If I will disable JavaScript and reload the page, as you can see we are not getting anything from the backend at all. Which actually means if our client project loads really long, then our user won't see anything and will simply leave the page. Page. The second problem is with search engines. For example, Google can't really read client JavaScript because it is not rendered inside page by default. If we are talking about my own website, which is built by the backend server, as you can see here, the search engine can simply read everything here inside the HTML because it was built by default when we are loading the page. And now we are coming to the question how we can render our DOM page and also have benefits of client frameworks. And as you can imagine, it is really difficult to just use some framework on the backend, render the whole markup there, and then on this rendered HTML apply client framework. This is a really difficult task. This is why we are getting another really popular approach, which is called server-side rendering. And we are talking about using of some client framework like React, and then the same React on the backend, where we are typically using Node, just because then we are getting the same JavaScript on the client and on the server that can be executed with minimal differences. So what we are getting with server-side rendering? First of all, we will see something on the initial page load because our page will be built on the backend by Node.js and React. Secondly, our search engines can really read or initialize our page and index this page correctly. What problems do we have with server-side rendering? First of all, it can be expensive for the backend server just because you must throw React fully inside backend parse all your components there, prepare everything, render it and deliver it to the page. And secondly, it is much more difficult to set up server-side rendering correctly in comparison to just client. But enough talking, let's try on the simple example of this application with two small pages, home and about, convert this project and render it with server-side. Our first step here will be to install necessary dependencies. This is why first of all here I want to install express package, which we need to render server-side our project. Secondly, we need babel, preset, env, then babel, preset, react, and babel, register. After installation of all these packages, let's jump back inside our project. Here we have our source, where inside we have just an app with two links and two routes to the home component and about component. But what we want to do, we want to create here a server folder. 
And inside this server folder, let's create first of all index.js. And what we want to do inside this index.js is first of all disable rendering of the styles inside React. This is why here we are writing require ignore styles. And actually we didn't install this package, this is why we must jump inside console and write yarnet ignore styles. After this we must call here our babel register that we just installed. And we want to provide inside some options. First of all it will be ignore, and here we want to ignore any node modules packages. This is why here we are writing node modules, just like regular expression. And after this we are providing presets. And here we must provide inside array presets that we installed. First of all it will be babel slash preset env and secondly babel slash preset react. And as a last step here we want to require our server. This is why here let's write require and just server that we will create in a second. So let's jump here inside our server folder and create here server.js. And here we just need a normal express application. And what is more importantly, because we wrote there Babel, we can use here normal imports. This is why here let's write import express from express package and we want to create our application. So here we simply call our express. After this let's start our application with app listen. And inside we can simply provide some port, for example 3005, and here is a function. And inside this function let's write console log app is launched. What we want to do now is just block all routes of our backend application because later we will render there our index.html page. And for this we can simply write app use and provide inside a star. This means that we will apply it to all our routes. And inside we are getting request and response. And for now I want to simply write here res send server side. Now let's create a new command inside our package JSON. This is why here I will open our package JSON and here we have our scripts. And at the end I want to create server side rendering script which will be just node server slash index.js. Let's try to start it now. I will simply write yarn server side rendering and as you can see it is started with command app is launched. Now inside browser we can open our local host 3005 and reload the page and we are getting here server side. And actually here I can write for example slash about and I just get always server side, which is exactly what we want. We want to render our backend on any route. Now what we want to do is build our React application. Actually inside console we can simply write yarn build and it will generate for us a build folder with all prepared and minified JavaScript, HTML and CSS. As you can see now in our project we have a generated build folder. Why do we need that? Because first of all we want to use this index.html and all our javascript is injected here. This is why what we must do now here we want to serve this html page from our build folder. And for this we must import one default package which is called fs. So we are importing fs from fs and here instead of resend we can write fs.readfile and inside we are providing a path. This is why here path resolve and actually path we also don't have. We must import here our path from path package. Now inside our resolve we can write just build folder slash index.html. As a second argument here I want to write utf8 and then we are getting here error and some data that we got from the file. So here still I just want to write res send for example full and before I want to console log what we are getting. So here let's look on our error and on our data. To test this we must restart our yarn ssr command. And as you can see here we are getting an error the path argument must be a string and provided function. Which actually means I did it wrong. I missed bracket here because we want to provide inside read file our path. This is why here we must close it, not here at the end, but here after path resolve. Which actually means inside our read file we are providing path resolve, then utf8, and then a function. As you can see now we are getting full, but here inside our terminal we can see the content of our index.html file. This is null because we don't have any errors, and this is our html file that we read from the build folder. What I want to do now, I want to check for the error. 
So if we are getting here error, we want first of all to log it with console error. And after this I want to return res status, it will be 500. And let's send here some text, like for example some error happened. And if we don't have an error, we must use a special function from React to render the tree of our components. And for this we must import here React from React. But it is not all, we also must import here React DOM server. And it is coming from the package React DOM slash server. Now let's create a variable which we can call HTML. And here we want to call React DOM server dot render to string. And this is essentially the conversion from our tree of React components to just plain HTML. This is why inside what we want to provide a static router. Why is that? Because actually we have routes inside our React application. Here inside source app component we have routes. And these are routes which are coming from the package React Router DOM, which we typically use inside React world. So here on the top we can import static router. And it is coming from package React Router DOM slash server, which actually means for the client application we are using React Router DOM, just like normally, for the backend we are using static router. And now inside this render string we can just provide the markup of React. And we are providing here static router location and inside we want to read location from request.url. This is just our URL. Here we are closing our static router and inside we want to render our app component because this is our first component. And for this we must import also our component app from the source slash app. So this is how we are preparing HTML on our backend. After this we can just send it back to the browser to render. This is why here let's send it with resend. But we don't want to break the whole HTML. This is why let's simply replace one tag. So here let's use data.replace because actually data is our HTML. And here inside we want change our div id root, let's close this div, to div id root, let's close this div again, but now inside we want to throw the whole html, which actually means inside our index html, as you can see here, we have our tag where we typically are rendering react application div id root. But if we are rendering it on the server side, we are just replacing this empty tag with dvd root and html inside. Let's check if it's working at all. I'm jumping here inside the console and I'm restarting our yarn server side. Now let's reload the page. And as you can see here, it works. I can just open the source code of the page. As you can see, we are getting the minified version. And here we see our DOM elements. Here is our title, React app. And here we have our links to home about. And here is a home content, which actually means we successfully rendered our React application inside backend. But here now let's open the console. And as you can see, we are getting errors. Why is that? Because actually we are trying to lower these chunks of JavaScript inside our client, but it is not working. Why is that? Because here we are responding with HTML. We didn't load this JavaScript correctly on the backend. And this happens because we didn't resolve correctly our public folder. This is why here after our app use, we can just write app use and inside we are providing express.static and inside we want to pass path resolve and we want to resolve our folder. And actually we want to just use current folder, then we want two dots and here we want build folder, which actually means after we build the whole project inside build folder, we have here everything that we need, not only index.html, but also in static JavaScript, here are all our chunks. This is why here this line is essential. But it is not enough to just write this express static like this, because we will have collision between index.html inside our build folder and this app use. This is why here instead of star, instead of applying it to all our routes, I want to write a regular expression. So what we can write here is just something like this. And it means that from the beginning of our line we must have a slash. Only then we will apply it. With this condition we won't have any problems with our index.html. 
As you can see in browser, we don't have any errors inside console. Here inside network, we can see that our chunks are JavaScript. And most important, we must check our view source, because we must see inside this DVD root our HTML, and it should not be empty. If you see here an empty index.html, it means that it served not this code from this abuse, but just an index.html from the build folder. So we are almost ready with our application. Our last step will be to change our client side. And actually for this we must jump inside source index.js. And here we have React DOM render, like we typically do inside React. But instead here we must write here hydrate. So what is the difference between render and hydrate? Actually render simply renders everything. And hydrate is trying to use all DOM nodes from the backend and it simply attaches listeners from the React on existing DOM nodes. Which actually means if you are rendering React application with server side, you must leverage React DOM .hydrate. So once again, how it is working? Our backend with Node serves an empty index.html page where it on the fly injects the whole React tree as an HTML. With that, we are getting a page which is rendered by server. After that, React on the client is trying to hydrate the whole application and attach all listeners to existing DOM nodes. And after our full application is being loaded, we have a normal client application. And now you for sure think, ok, but it is too complicated. I don't want to write all this stuff. And then I have a solution for you. If you really need to render React on the server side, you might want to check Next.js. This is a framework which renders on the backend and on the client React application. It does not cover all cases and sometimes you really need to do it from scratch, but in a lot of cases it will really solve your problem. And actually if you are interested to know what are the recommended practices of using React and Redux, make sure to check this video also.